Yo, beast mode, I go beast mode. Left, right, hook, then I reload. Speed until the E breathe slow. Connect every uppercut, clean blow. Okay, it's Chris Williams here, Southpaw Jab, with the reigning Commonwealth champion and the mandatory for the British title, Philip Quicksilver Bows. How's it going, bro? All good. You know, couldn't really like ask for so, um, a better experience and a journey at the moment. So yeah, man, it's good. You know, we're just doing our thing. You know, doing what we've got to do, and just preparing for the upcoming task. The upcoming task being a key menace brown for the yeah. fake and British yeah, title. Yeah, 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 definitely. I mean, um, as I said, I haven't really been giving too much airplay to him um, and to what he, that he's doing because it's not really about him, it's about what I'm doing. So, um, yeah, just cracking on and doing what I've got to do. You and Riddy, as he likes to be known, have been like circling each other for a while. You fought for the British title against Glen Foot. English. Uh, English, sorry, for, against Glen Foot. Yeah. He beat Glen Foot for the English title. Yeah. He then spoke about you trying to get Commonwealth title shot. No, 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 let's go back. That's not even how it happened. How it happened was, I was happy that he beat Glen Foot and I was congratulating him. I was talking to him in his inbox, everything was fine. We was like brothers, you know what I mean? And then um, all of a sudden, his manager, Lee Eaton, has told him that I've turned down and fight with him. So, with him not actually asking me what happened, he's tweeted or gone on Facebook to say, I've ducked to fight at him, I want to fight, you know, an unknown African. But truth be told is that that fight was already penciled in way before Lee and came with an offer. Like, how I look at it is that like, I don't bow to what people told me. I've got a plan, I've got a journey, and that's what I'm doing. So, you know, when that happened, he called me out. I just bl blocked him on everything shut the whole thing down in the sense of I don't play that game you know I don't play that shit so in, so in my language but I don't play that game in the sense of I do what I want to do and no one don't control me you know what I'm saying so for when that happened I just blocked him and if I if I didn't want to fight him or I'm so scared of to fight him whatever why would I have taken this fight for the British title you know so it doesn't really make sense and that's the only time I'm going to talk about this issue and, and my opponent so let's move on to um, other topics Okay, well, we'll move on to the belt then. Yeah. Okay, so last thing on Akeem Ennis Brown, quickly, is that he was in the golden contract and he yeah. pulled out to fight you. Yeah. Uh, are you happy because it means that you've not got to wait around for another opponent to be in Yeah, I, look, 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 I don't mind. I'm on a journey. My journey is to collect belts and to be the best I can be. So if that means, you know, Akeem Brown fighting me, then we'll do that. Like, as I'm saying, that like, there's never been an issue of me fighting. His manager lied to him, told him, I pulled out a fight of him, which never happened. So Lee Ian needs to stop lying to Akeem Edge Brown and telling him something that didn't happen. Because Lee Ian never spoke to me, and he never asked me, would you fight Ennis Brown? That never happened. So truth be told, stop lying to people and saying that this happened when it never happened. Because that, that's how rivalries happen, that's how problems happen in camp. Me and Akeem Ennis Brown have had a problem now because a manager told him that I don't want to fight him. Truth, and that's the bottom line. So, so let's clear up. The reason why you, I'm going to use quotation marks here, didn't want to fight him yeah. was because you already had a contract signed I for a Commonwealth. I had the contract fight to fight someone else, an, an, African, an African opponent. So because I had a, a, a fight um, scheduled and penciled already, why am I going to pull out my fight to fight someone that wasn't even in line? Like, it doesn't make sense. You know? As I said, this is the only airtime I'm giving him. The only airtime I'm talking about this situation, you know what I mean? And the rest is going to happen on the 29th of, um, you know, November. Okay, so um, we're going to go back a little bit here. Yeah. So, so we're not talking about uh, Akeem anymore. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure we haven't spoken on camera mm. about your come off type defence against... Tom Farrell. No, it's, been, it's been a long time that we ain't we ain't oh, we link we speak all the time and yeah, but not on camera. Debate, we haven't camera, we, we haven't had you on yeah, camera. Yeah, you know we had a great victory in Liverpool um, against Tom Farrell. The great Liverpool crowd were great to me. You know what I mean? Tom Farrell's a great opponent, respectful. His crowd were too. You know my fans had a great time up there, and Liverpool's a great city. And um, you know we went up there, we done what we had to do. You know we beat Tom Farrell and ex uh, executed our plan, and we just a better on the night. Okay, so you um, you're saying it was a great um, performance. 
I spoke to Barry earlier. He said it was your coming out party. Do you feel that was the one where you announced yourself? Like you were already Commonwealth champion, but you did that on a on a quote, uh, small hall show, mm. not on TV. Your first defence was against Tom. Yeah. Live on Sky Sports. Do you do you agree that that was a bit of your coming out party? Um, I wouldn't say coming out because I don't like to use that terminology. But I would say it was it put me in the public eye. You know, in the public eye, um, and it made me people notice who I who I am. To be honest with you, you know. And the last time I was on a matchroom show, I never performed. I never produced the goods, and you know, thank God this time I did. What was it like being like back on the big time? Because after great. after that fight, you're yeah. talking about Joe that Hughes, was the Joe yeah. Hughes, Hughes fight, Joe Hughes in 2014. Yeah. Um, it was it was it was great. It was great to have. You know, like, see how, you know, stars really, really live. Like, the top matchroom fighters and the top fighters of the world live. You know, you have, you know, um, vehicles come to collect you from the hotel. You know, you have, you know, everything you want. Like, you have everything there. So, it was really, 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 really a great um, experience, you know. A great experience, a great time. And I'm definitely, you know, looking forward for more. If that's what um, my destiny is um, written, you know. Okay, so you, you, you talk a lot about your destiny. You talk a lot about the path you're on. Yeah. Um... I said this to Barry, and I want to get your view on it. You're, you're uh, for a boxer, a bit long in the tooth now. Yeah. yeah. Um, do you feel each fight is potentially your last because of that? And does that mean you take it that little bit more serious? Yeah, like, you know, at the end of the day, I'll say it's a journey. So it's a case of you never know the destination. You know the destination you want to get to, but you don't know if you're going to get to that destination. You know what I'm saying? So you came in this morning, anything could have happened to you coming to the, to, to the gym, you know? So, you know... Every fight, I'm treating like it's like, you know, potentially my last fight, you know what I'm saying? So, at the end of the day, I train hard, I do what I've got to do, you know, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not a fighter that's actually just living for boxing. So, that's why I don't take fights if I don't need to take fights. I don't take fights because I need to take fights. I take fights because I want to take fights, you know? Also, you know, I've set up things outside boxing, you know, my academy, stuff like that. So, I mean, it's more of a case of doing what's right for me. Not what's right for everyone else and lying in their pockets. It's about what I'm, what's good for me and my family, you know. You, talk, you, you touched on your uh, Quicksilver Bows Boxing Academy there. Yeah. Uh, which has been up and running, I think, three weeks now. Yeah, yeah, three, four weeks, you know. It's going great. We've got 18 kids that, you know, that come in religiously every week, you know. So, you know, we're doing well. You know, we'll be up in um, an official amateur club soon. So, um, you know, I'm an England boxing coach. You know, one of my trainers here, um, Dwayne, he's my assistant. And there as well, he's, he's an um, England boxing affiliate coach. So we're just doing our thing, looking for the champion of tomorrow. And um, also, you know, I'm the first Commonwealth champion of my borough. So, you know, it's about establishing a club in my area where I'm actually from, Leytonstone. And, um, you know, giving kids a championship mindset. You know, it's not, it's not only about, oh, coming to be a boxer. I'm not trying to find a champion. I'm just for discipline. Want, I want kids to be disciplined, have a championship mindset in the sense of you can achieve what you want to do. Be what you want to be, and it doesn't. You don't let it determine you from the area you're from that you can't achieve anything. You know, so yeah, man, we're just doing our thing. We're just doing our thing, man. Okay, so uh, you you kind of um, answer what I was gonna say. Uh, the next thing I was gonna ask you, but people might think you've been out of the ring for a while. Yeah. Because the last fight was Tom Farrell. Yeah. When you've had the fight cancelled, which was. Yeah. But you've also, like you just said, yeah. you've got your amateur. Um, coaches license yeah, now yeah. Um, and you kind of answered it but what was the um, what was the reasoning bef- behind you doing it now while you're still active because you know it is I'm, I've been learning from a lot of ex-pros a lot of them retired and tried to establish a foundation a movement a charity and I think when you're not really active people kind of forget about you sure memories definitely you know so I'm still active I said I'm the only Commonwealth champion in my borough, you know what I mean? That's something that's a that's a big achievement in itself. So you know I'm just trying to, you know, use my momentum, you know, and carry on doing what I'm doing, you know. And God willing, you know, I'm a British champion. And we just keep going from there really, Julie, you know. Okay. Going back to the British title. Yeah. With a win. Yeah. What would you want next? Are you looking? Do you want to win that belt outright with with the, with you know the what? defenses? I never ever ever you know try and look too much ahead. You know, so as I said, 
whatever's written for me is going to happen. So if I'm meant to vacate straight away, I will. If I'm meant to fight for the European, I will. If I'm meant to have a world eliminator, I will. I mean, I'll sit down with my team after the British title win and we'll, 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 we'll see what happens from there, you know? Okay, wicked. Well, before we go, Phil, firstly, is there anything else you want to talk about? No, nah, not really. Just want to big up all like all my um, sponsors. You know, Sackville Travel, Rescue. You know, um, Box Fit. You know, they've always done my kit. They've always been there for me. Chaos. You know, what I mean, great guy. You know, I want to be supporting him on his journey, being a professional boxer too. You know, and just all the fans that's been there for me and all the people that's been there for you. You know, what I mean, their Southport jab as well. And um, yeah, man. You know, also this whole um Quicksilver Bowls Academy is a team effort. You know, what I mean, they've got oh, so much great people behind me. So. Everyone thinks, oh, it's me doing this thing, but it's like a team effort, you know what I mean? Direct people behind me, pushing me and kind of putting things in place. So, you know, it's going to big up my team as well at Quicksilver Bowls Academy. And we just keep striving and going forward. Uh, wicked. Well, we will definitely talk to you soon and definitely. we will be there on the night. Um, but thanks for taking the time out to talk to us on camera. No Yo, beast mode, I go beast mode. Left, right, hook, then I reload. Speed until the E3 slow. Connect every uppercut, clean blow.